This is a knife made of pure superconductor. It has been sharpened to a razor-like edge. It looks really cool, but how well will it cut? And was it worth the $500 we spent on the material alone? There's only one way to find out. We're gonna put it to test against our previous reigning champ, the Meteorite Knife. To get you up to speed, let's quickly review how we made that. As you can imagine, Meteorite is also quite expensive, so our workaround was to get a small piece and use heat and a jewelry rolling mill to stretch it out. Then I shaped it with a belt grinder and attached a handle before etching it in acid to bring out its special pattern. It turned out a lot better than I thought it would, and it was quite sharp. So if we're going to beat Meteorite, we're gonna to have to pull out all the stops for our superconductor knife. We got a very nice piece of superconductor that we're gonna combine with a carbon fiber tang and some custom handles that I made from scratch. However, in order to get the razor sharp results we're looking for, we're gonna to have to bring in the big guns. Somebody who's a winner of Forged in Fire, the ultimate knife maker's test. We have to go all in to make sure this knife has the best chance of dethroning the Meteorite knife. While this is cutting, allow me to explain superconductors a little bit. This rare material is used to make things levitate, it's used in MRI machines, and even particle accelerators. It's great for helping you bend the laws of physics. Now you nerds out there are gonna say it's impossible to bend the laws of physics, but that's not what your mom said last night. So far in our journey to find the best exotic material for a knife blade, we've had some really good ones and some real stinkers. I'm talking to you, Amethyst. So I'm hoping Superconductor will be the next big thing we need to take it to the next level. But before we get to any of that, we have to actually get our hands on some Superconductor. I don't know if you've ever tried to buy any, but it's not too easy. Unless you want to burgle a hospital or science facility, you're kind of out of luck. Unless you know someone. See, I've been in the game for longer than a lot of you viewers have been on this earth. My contact, let's call him Jeffrey E, operates in some of the darkest corners of the internet. He's got access to substances and materials you don't even want to know exist. So when I hit him up, I knew he would deliver, even if the prices were astronomical. After a quick Bitcoin transaction and waiting a couple weeks for it to ship from his island headquarters, we had our superconductor. Oh, wait. Uh, I, uh, I get my sugar and my superconductor from the same supplier on the dark web, and yeah, I keep telling them, you know, put it in the, put them in different packages, make them look different. That is some beautiful superconductor, if I do say so myself. Here's a pro tip for anyone following along at home. Avoid the guy named Ian Asir. He'll either send you really bad quality copper or take you waterboarding in Guantanamo Bay. I learned the hard way, it's not as fun as it sounds. We left a millimeter on there so it wouldn't fall through because that was fixing to. Yep, it would have gone right into that hole. So now we have to break that beautiful little piece off. All right, she's sanded down. Let's see how she looks. Ooh. Oh, is it hot in here or is it just me? And there she is, what a beaut. I love how it has this copper here in the center and then the titanium rods are out here on the outside. That looks really good now that it has the knife shape in it. Okay, we got the carbon fiber and the superconductor cut, but we still need to make the handles. First, I need to get some aluminum honeycomb. Luckily, I know just the place. Jackie Chan would be disappointed in me. I think I see it. I got it just what I need it. If I see one comment telling me to use mold release, I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> Yeah! Yeah! Uh, I'm just gonna add this to the resin to give it a nice opaque look, but we're not gonna go too crazy, and you'll see why later when we're done. Look at that. Time for some secret sauce. All my homies call me Roy G. Biv. This is getting warm, which means it's starting to cure, which means it's go time. Oh, 
I'll put that in the pressure pot overnight. The next day. All right, moment of truth here. Let's go chop it up and see what it looks like. Well, we have our scales, but don't call me a fish. Howdy, I'm Patrick. These are two of my favorite people. My brother, Daniel, and Nate, the blade maker. This is Nate Summers. He's a Forged in Fire champion, and he's known for making knives so sharp they can do things you wouldn't think possible. Have you ever seen someone cut a slice off a carrot that's paper thin? Didn't think so. So if anyone's going to be able to help us defeat the meteorite knife, it's going to be Nate. Good to meet you. Hey, how you doing? Officially, I've got the ingredients here for a good knife. Don't have the skill. <laughs> can, you, can you make a knife out of that? Yes. Let's go. What do you think? Is that about the, the uh, profile we want for the handle? I think so. I think that looks really nice. Very angular matches the ethos that we're going for here. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Sweet. And tell me how that feels. I'm holding it just like so. My thumb on the back. What okay, do you think? I got small hands. Oh, I'm liking that. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a great profile. Comfy? It's a lot better than anything I've ever made. That uh, the niobium and titanium in there it's, is, it's tougher than I thought it was yeah, gonna be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was working on it and wore it's, out the thing. I'm time. surprised. Yeah. I'm surprised and I'm delighted. Maybe this will like take and hold a pretty good edge. <laughs> oh wow, that's cool. There you go. Oh yeah. If we want to make this thing really sharp, we want to make the edge thinner. Okay. That's gonna take too long with the polishing belt, so okay. I'd switch back to this one. Okay. This looks like it's CNC. That's incredible. Look how you can see the titanium neobium rods sticking through. I love that. I think it's safe to say you did a better job than I would have. I'm just letting the machine do all the work. Ah, That's smart. The real key to this. Yeah. That's the secret. It's been a day. Nate glued these handles on off camera because we didn't want to wait for them to cure. So uh, I think we're ready to keep going. I think that's all for the 36. Let me switch it up to the 320. Touch all the surfaces, and then we'll scrub it with some sandpaper. You've been working so hard. I just want to cool you down. It's 32 degrees. Oh. Straight lines are cool. I just got to clean up inside here, and I think we're good. I'm using the edge of the flat platen to cut a curve into the handle here called the finger well. And this is a little bit different. It's more difficult to do it this way, but at least I don't have to change out my attachment. All right, that is it for the sandpaper. Let's move on over to the buffer. Buffer? I hardly know her. <laughs> We're sorry, Nate. <laughs> if you want us to leave, we can leave. I hope the audience knows what this is like for me. <laughs> Ooh. 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 Oh, it's kind of like translucent. Just about done. Let me get inside here and here. That's a cool looking knife. Now place it. Blade Runner 2049? Um, I don't know, I was thinking the other one that get pulled into the video game. Tron. 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 It's a Tron blade. Yeah. Let's scratch off that epoxy and then let's like, uh, do like the final etch. Now before we etch this, I wanna get it super clean. If the surface is not touching the acid, nothing's gonna work. Acetone's perfect, it's not gonna destroy anything on here. It won't hurt the epoxy resin, it won't hurt the scales. 
and it won't hurt the metal. And it's good for removing nail polish. It's ready. All right, so we have here muriatic acid. It's for etching concrete, but also works well to dissolve copper, more so than the titanium niobium. So we're going to put this into the jar and put the knife into said jar and add to it a little special something. We've got some industrial grade hydrogen peroxide here. It's like 10 times stronger than the stuff you get at the grocery store. So why don't we be careful with this? All right, without further ado, we'll pour one out for all the homies. Add this to it. All right, she's ready for the blade. She needs the sea. Yeah, I'd say let's take it out and see what it looks like. Okay. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Oh, the acid dripping off. It kind of looks like blood. Very, very strong acid. Jeez. Yeah. That copper is so bright. Almost it ate white. away a whole bunch of that copper. Yeah, the... It's almost entirely the titanium and niobium. All right, I'm going to dump it in a neutralizing agent. That sounds fancy. It's not. It's just like a soap. Now it's not gonna burn me if we touch it. Let's take a look. Wow. We definitely heavily etched. Man alive. Ooh, you can see the circles of the titanium rods in there. You can yeah. see also right here how far down the copper is eaten away below where the niobium is left off. Let's sharpen it. You've been wearing gloves this whole time. Why take them off now? When I'm sharpening, I, I want to be able to feel what's going on with the, the burr. Getting rid of it is what makes something super sharp. Okay. It's just about feel. Got to be able to feel it. <laughs> oh, man. I think we'll be able to okay. cut through all of our vegetables with this just fine. Oh yeah. Right. Okay, we have the reigning champ here, the meteorite knife, versus the, the rookie of the year, the superconductor. We're gonna put them through a series of tests ranging from easiest to hardest. I mean, just visually, I would say this one is doing a little better. I think the uh, uh, design matches the material. I'd agree. Well, let's cut some stuff and let's see how it does. Um, my uh, thought on the design of this knife is that um, the edge is very thin and pretty sharp, and the spine is very thick. Uh, I make uh, a lot of kitchen knives per, uh, personally. I like my knives very sharp. This spine is about three times thicker than I would like for a, okay, uh, a chef knife. So maybe something more like. The yeah. Meteorite. So let's let's take a look at this. What I really like about this meteorite knife is how thin uh, the bevel is compared to the rest of the knife. See, that feels good as I cut through it. And a knife sharpness is just the part that gets you through the surface. The edge just kind of gets you into the material, but the shape of the blade, how the rest of the blade is shaped is gonna be what um, determines how, how easily it, it carries through, um, okay. how, it, how it moves through the, the medium. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's like So again, it's paper. sharp. Yeah, that's like paper thin. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Wow. Let's try this. All right, let's see how she does. Okay, not bad, but... No, not bad at all. Definitely <laughs> more sawing than the... I don't uh, feel... Uh, yeah, I don't feel like this knife is quite as sharp, but because of how thin and uh, wide and flat it is, I enjoy it cutting through vegetables very much. Okay. So if, as far as this test goes, as far as cutting through, and I'll... Let me show you. Carrot's a good example of this. Something wide. Oh. oh. Now, if I was to slice with this, this is a... Ooh. This is a peeling and slicing dream. I like how thin. Okay. See, I'm, now I'm not exploding the carrot anymore. Now sounds another way we can use to. Mm, yeah, I can kind of hear it ripping. So this that. really has to saw. If we grab the uh, superconductor, it almost sounds like shears. Yeah, you're not hearing the same like crackling, ripping sound of the carrot breaking. 
All right, Nate, that was really fun, but it's time to be very serious and crown a true victor. What is your verdict? Between the meteorite and the superconductor, I'm gonna choose superconductor. I say this because I think the knife is overall just more well-built and it is objectively sharper. No hard feelings. All right, I'll try not to get offended. Nate, it's been a pleasure working with you. You took this project to a whole new level. It was crazy to see you on Forge and Fire and then work with you in person. Uh, <laughs> you've got an Instagram, how can they follow you? Uh, uh, Nate the Blade Maker. Do it. Oh, it's the shop squirrel. <laughs> While he's running around, I'd like to invite you to click here to watch this video where we made a knife oh, out of obsidian. I thought it turned out pretty interesting. 